Yep. <laughs> hey, we are live. I hope. I'm going to assume we're live. <laughs> if you're out there, please comment to let us know that we're actually uh, being we seen. We can see your comments as they come across live. If you guys are there, let us know. Just say, Azor's Tiger, I know you're there. Dr. Cactus, someone say hey so we can see you. Um, it's John. Hi. And over here is my buddy Richard, as usual. And Hi, we're going to get right to it. First of all, no theme song because we're not editing this. So we decided we're going to do the Benny Hill theme song for our theme song this, this episode. <laughs> <laughs> you, can't, you can't beat Benny Hill. I mean, he goes with everything. <laughs> so we're going to be talking uh we i don't even have to tell you what we're talking about we're talking about venom 27 this crazy one in 100 stegman variant that was supposed to be going to shops yesterday for new comic book day what ended up happening is it looks like the entire print run ended up being a double cover where you had the uh the john boy um uh, the sorry i am completely blanking on his name right now uh, John Boy Myers variant cover on top of the Stegman variant cover. And the entire run has this double cover error. So there we go. Yeah, I can see everybody now saying hi. Thank you guys. <laughs> Appreciate it. Uh, hey, so, Steiger, David, and, Mike. Uh, David Bader. So we are, we are going to talk about everything we know so far because all the research we've done today, nobody's really – collated all the information yet and that's what we're really hoping to do for you guys so you can be informed we're not trying to harsh anyone's mellow trust me if you got this and you're super jazzed and you're excited and you think you got a piece of uh diamond great we're not trying to bring you down we're just trying to present the facts as we know it so venom 27 rich lots of variants were solicited for this including the stegman variant cover uh your favorite yeah, the Clayton Crane Crane uh, Venom cover with the, with the American flag draped over his shoulders. Love that cover. And then there was this John Boy Myers variant cover that was supposed to be limited to 3,000 with the trade dress and then an additional 1,000 virgin copies. Now, what seems to have happened is that the John Boy variant covers with the trade dress were discovered to have double covers with a black and white, looks like a sketch variant of the Stegman cover underneath. As this day has progressed and the more research we've done, it's looking like all 3,000 of those potentially are that double cover. So we're potentially, and I, I say potentially because we've got a lot more to cover here, you're looking at 3,000 copies of this book that are out there. So, all right. At, at most 3,000. Now, we know for a fact that, that the comic was recalled at some point, and supposedly Diamond is pulping all the books that go back. So... There is a maximum of 3,000 of those out there. We really just have no way of knowing the exact count. Here's where we're at. So Marvel has requested a recall. It, In my opinion, it may be far too late for that. If you're a comic shop and you got this variant, mm, you're going to yeah. get it on eBay, you know, or you're going to give it to one of your favorite customers or something like that. You're not going to, uh, oh, sure, here, Marvel. Now, I heard another <laughs> rumor. I have not heard any kind of backup or substantiation to this. So let me caveat that. The rumor I heard was that if you are a shop and you received one of these and you do not return it, your, your variant uh, privileges are going to be restricted. I have a real hard time believing that rumor. Yeah, I do too. And how are they going to enforce, how are they going to know? Uh, in the first place. So that's a difficult one. to work with. Right. So I'm putting it out there because we're trying to give you guys as much information as we have. And that is one thing we've heard. You, Richard, you called uh, a really good contact of yours with uh, that has a diamond account and you got some really good intel. Why don't you share that? Yeah, uh, I was told that the uh, they originally shipped the book out to everyone with a three day shipping radius. Uh, and then they noticed that there was a problem with the book and they didn't ship the books to the other uh, LCSs out there that were outside of that three-day radius. So they, they just took their books and pulped them. So only a certain subset of the LCSs out there ever got this book in the first place. Well, let's talk about that. The new comic book day is what, everybody that's in the chat? It's Wednesday, right? If you're in Ohio, you know new comic book day is Wednesday and you've got competition that is going to have new books on Wednesday. Why would you not have the three day shipping? Right. So, you know, how much got out there? Now I can tell you my personal 
uh, experience with this book yesterday. Um, I didn't see it at any local comic shops. Didn't see it anywhere. I went to quite a few. However, I did go to the Frank and Son Collectibles show, which is, if you've seen the podcast before, it is this huge, uh, big collector show with a, an emphasis on comics, really, that's in an old, uh, I believe it's an old Costco in the valley here in southern california and every wednesday they open at three and there's all sorts of uh dealers there that have new comics i was there i think there were probably you know with the with it being wednesday and with covid happening and all the restrictions there were probably about 12 comic dealers that were selling new comics there out of those 12 comic dealers that were there three of them had this book and they were yeah. you know, it's, I have a hard time believing in the rarity of a book where I can get three copies of it within a 50 mile or a 50 foot radius. Of right, but at, at the same time, you know, it's, it's an exciting thing. I mean, you, you texted me, you know, immediately when you saw those and, and sent me pictures of it uh, because of one dealer had two of them. Uh, yeah. and, and, you know, you were, you were, you were deliberating whether or not you wanted to pay the price for it. I was on the fence and I can, I can walk you guys, by the way, I see you all in the chat. We are going to take your questions and comments when we get to the end of this uh, preamble. Trust me, keep them coming. Cause we can really, yeah. use, we appreciate you all being here. And we ramble. Uh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, let me, let me walk you through my experience yesterday that, uh, that Richard got to have a front seat to via text. I get to the show. I see these three, um, copies of this book and, one thing that was kind of telling to me, besides the fact there were three of them within this tight area, was they all had the same price. They were all asking four ninety nine for it. There was no variant of the variant there, and when it comes to price, and I was kind of like debating: should I grab all three of these? I really was that close to grabbing all three of them <laughs> because I really fell into the hype and the FOMO. I mean, I had that visa out. I was like. Mm. And then I thought, you know what? There's too many of them in too close a space for this to be truly rare. And then I get home and I see eBay and I immediately start kicking the crap out of myself. Uh, and, and, what, and what did I tell you? I told you, don't sweat it because you, you just it's just too early to know. Well, I'm seeing these these verified sales of eight hundred dollars one after another after another. And I'm like, ah, this would have been an easy, quick flip. And so I'm, I'm kind of beating <laughs> myself up. And then I wake up this morning and I start doing a little research, you know, in between my day job. And I, I see that there were 41 copies of this book sold in less than 24 hours. Uh, and one guy, and I wish I could bring it up here. Uh, I can share my screen, but I don't want to ruin this live stream. One guy had, if you look on eBay, he's got a picture of like seven of them fanned out that he's got seven of them. So then I started feeling a little better. I'm seeing the prices, although there's still some verified um, or some, some completed sales today around the 800 area. There's a lot more around 350, 400. Right. It seems to be calming down a bit. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. I, I, this is, we were talking a little bit before the live stream. And for these error, error books, they're not like a regular variant where there's a pretty much a huge market. Most people who like variants will like different variant covers. When you talk about errors, it's a smaller set of collectors. And that smaller set of collectors is a smaller market. Um, they may pay the price for that particular error variant, but there's less of them out there. And we've already seen so many copies, like John was just talking about. Are we saturating the market for those error, error covered buyers? And at some point, we just fill fill up that the, the demand, and then all of a sudden, people are stuck with eight hundred dollar books that they bought. I uh, you know that's that's the tough thing. It's so early to tell. You've also got some some historical precedents here. The Venom Lethal Protector Number One Black Cover Error, where there was no uh, uh, foil on it. Mm -hmm. Those books are really desirable. Is this one of those? I, I don't know. One thing I wish I had done before we went live, I just thought of it, was looking at the, the uh, cities where all these eBay auctions are, because that would give us a better perspective, whether it's limited to one geographic location like the West Coast, or if they, these books actually got out everywhere. Uh, you know, you, you've got 3,000 potentially, 
with 41 sold already, plus the three I saw yesterday <laughs> were already at like 44 books out of 3,000. Mm. That's a pretty high ratio. It, it, it is. And, and, and we were also talking earlier, I had that Redfell Nagin. Um, when you have a rare book that has a limited appeal, your your first inclination is get rid of it. You know, it's a hot potato because you don't know how long it's going to hold its value. I literally was going to come home and sell them on eBay. I wasn't going to hold them, slab them. I was like, all right, let me see if I can flip these. And I saw the price and I was like, Whoa. yeah, yeah, it's, it's tough. You know, <laughs> the first couple of weeks when the, one of these air books comes out, you get a lot of FOMO purchases and what you really have to do is wait to see how the market you know, settles and what, that the market will decide what is of value, just like the first appearance of of uh, Null. We had uh, fights about a uh, first appearance in in Venom number three or Venom number five. The market decided it's Venom number three, and you know that's that's what's going to have to happen with this error uh, variant. The market's going to have to decide: is it worth something, or is it is it not? Is it just a flash in the pan? And people, hundred percent, yeah. And now we've got a bunch of comments here. I'm going to start putting some up and some questions. And I think this one's a really good one from Mike S. I hope they add something distinctive to the regular one in 100 when it releases in two weeks. Cause you know, they have to go back and do this. You know, that's actually a really good point. You Marvel could argue the fact that it's just a single cover makes it distinctive. <laughs> but you know, that's a bad argument. I agree. No. Mike S. Oh, Richard, I just feel free. I, I don't know. Marvel and DC have this. Can you hear me? Yep. Yep. Hello? You're back. Okay. You're back. Um, Marvel and Marvel and DC had this horrible habit of just changing an accent color on their, on their additional covers. So uh, I'm hoping they do come out with something special for the one of 100 variant. Um, it really My guess is the same thing as you can see there, at least yeah. change the color of the trade dress on the one in 100. Yeah. Uh, David Bader says, if you got one, can you show it? I did not get one. As, as uh, Richard and our friend Forrest, who's also on here, uh, is DD Comics fan on Instagram, can tell you, I was sending them pictures. <laughs> I was pacing back and forth between the booths. I was like, nah, the best I can do for you is show you the regular Stegman variant. There you go. I got that. It's a good variant. That's a good, that's a good cover. <laughs> nice cover. Uh, yeah. But no, I did not uh let's see we've got uh dr cactus has a really good point this book is in full fomo mode right now did any of you get it did anyone watching actually get one or buy one off eba or see it in their shop i'm really curious if anybody did it yeah i mean i, I there's none out here as far as i know i i didn't call around to a lot of different uh lcs's but um as far as i'm aware of um there aren't any um yeah, I'd be curious to see if anybody anybody actually picked one up. It, it could be a gold mine, you know. It it could be it could be um, an amazing buy. Uh, we just don't know. Leo Marquez says he's glad I didn't do it. It's hard for him to justify spending that much money on a modern yeah. book. You, I, you got me there. I'm kind of with you. And that's <laughs> why I didn't. But, okay, uh, that's a great point because right across from the booth where I saw the guy that had two of them was another dealer who had Silver Age books. And he had a copy of Fantastic Four number 12. I would say it's probably it wasn't slabbed, so you're rolling the dice there. It was probably a 6.5770 for, for $1,200. And I'm oh, thinking right. to myself, I can spend $1,500 on these three books, or I can have a Fantastic Four number 12. That's a beauty. I mean, I just can't get myself What's, out of that. I know. What's what happened to the market in, in the past year? We've gone from talking about, you know, Fantastic Four number 48 and, and Hulk 181 to talking about all these brand new modern books. I love me some modern books. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but for a book to be worth $800 the day it comes out, is just it, crazy. it is called bronze and modern gods. So don't think <laughs> selling the modern books here no. is just a matter of what you want to spend your money on and what's it, gonna hold its value. Don't get don't get me wrong. I just paid a good money, a lot of money for uh, a Star Wars uh variant for Clone Wars number one because I see a lot of potential in that book, even with the amount of money I paid for it. Once Mandalorian comes out or any other uh, Star Wars series on Disney Plus, there's room for that to grow in value. But in, in general, 
and, and I'm guilty of it too. Um, these store variants are horrible in that they're so good. They yeah. really draw you in and, you know, you want to, you want to get, you know, it's FOMO. You want to buy that latest store variant of, of uh, whatever. Your timing could not be better in that because Jay Marsh is saying he was so close to getting at least one on oh. eBay. The moment he saw the news, he passed because it seemed like everyone had the same error. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Go through your feed today, your Instagram feed. I counted a bunch more on my Instagram feed that people mm. have. I can name the handles, but I don't want to call them out because I, I kind of jumped in the comments and told them my trepidation and they got a little upset with me. I'm not, I, I, I get it. You've got a book that you think is going to put your kids through college and you got some, some jerk on Instagram in the comments saying, be careful, you know? Uh, yeah, so I get it, but I'm with you guys. It, it's tough. Um, and I'm looking at the other comments. Uh, Dr. Cactus has another point. It's pretty cool to have a double cover of a comic this new. Yeah. That, I mean, it used to be a lot more common in the Bronze Age when you'd find a double cover. Double covers are great. You know, there's up there quintuple covers. And the way that uh, CGC grades them, they grade it by the highest graded cover in the stack, which is usually the one inside. So some people get 9.9s out of these multiple cover books because that inner cover is protected by all the other covers on the outside. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's multiple covers can be can be really good. You brought up a good point when we were talking about this earlier, though. Let's say you have one and you send it in to get slabbed. Guess how it's going to get graded? What? It's going to get graded by that inner cover. The inner cover. Did you just yeah. say that? Yeah, okay. I just said that. <laughs> <laughs> I was Look, like, wait, did I miss, did I've I miss only a point? Yeah, no, it's... No, uh, someone I, had a, um, uh, a Amazing Spider-Man 361 that was a quintuple cover. And the inner one of that of that set was a nine point nine, and that's what that that book got graded as, which is fantastic. I think Azor's Tiger has summed it up when he says, "Yeah, that's crazy." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, the market is unbelievable right now. I mean, I've I, I've just never seen it so pumped in a down market like we are in. People are digging deep and coming up with the with the money to spend, you know, you know, good money on books. Let's go over yesterday's books real quick because this was the big story about yesterday, but there was a bunch of other crap going on at the same time. The Star Wars action figure variant oh, collection. I love book. that. I love that cover. If you guys haven't seen it, if anybody who's my age or John's age, we used to have this action figure, Star Wars action figures, little miniatures. Uh, they had a box that you can carry them around and was shaped as Darth Vader's helmet. And you flipped it over and you opened it up and there was compartments where you could put all the individual figures in. Well, Marvel has done uh, more than 100 covers of these action figures, the blister pack figures uh, they did in the past few years. They have a book that is specifically just the covers and uh, for 100 different covers. And they released that this week. I, I had no idea this was coming at all. Uh, it's a $10 book. But it is gorgeous, and it is sold out at Diamond. It's sold out at um, Midtown. I had to scramble to find <laughs> find myself some copies of it. But if you come across it, there's a couple. There's a A cover, which is uh, Darth Vader's face, which yeah. I'm not as interested in. And then there's a B cover, which is the back where you can see all the different figures at the top. You got Luke and Leia and um and uh, han and then you've got all the other characters in there it's, it's gorgeous cover really nostalgic and if you're over 40 you probably want to get one of these so yesterday frank and sons like i said 10 to 12 new comic dealers there three of them or three copies of this venom variant one copy of that star wars book mm. that i grabbed of course i'm not gonna let anybody else get that uh, <laughs> you know Read or Die, who has the best name ever, says, hello, Bronze of Modern Gods. We can't handle the truth <laughs> from my people earlier. Some people don't want the truth. They don't, they want to buy and, and just be in their, their little universe, and that's fine. You know, Some people, they buy, and it never leaves their collection. And if they're happy with it, then that's all that's important. It's a hobby. And now the people that are that got a little irritated with me telling my part, my story here, I mean, they were flat out angry that I dared to say I saw three copies at Frankenstein's. There's no way you did. I'm like, okay, I'm making it up. <laughs> They're dealers. They're here for a quick flip and to make some money. We're here for the collecting and we're here for you guys. You know, we're here. I hate to be dad again. I'm always dad. But I'm here <laughs> to make sure you guys spend wisely. 
You want to have money for your retirement. Now, yes, and this book is going to help you retire. Not. We we're not here to ruin anybody's fun. We just want to make sure that you know you people are 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 informed, and that's why we wanted to go live today because I'm not seeing it. I mean, I'm not seeing anything on Bleeding Cool. I'm not seeing anything from any of the big uh, comic book IG influencers on this. So we thought, you know, let's collate the all the information we have, put it out there, and then you guys can make an informed decision. Uh, and that might be it, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's as always. It's it's your your money is your collection. People buy books for different reasons. Some people buy to flip. Some people buy to, to you know for their personal collection. Just uh, we just wanted to make sure that you had as much information as 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 much as information as we have to help you make an informed decision. So we're not going to keep you guys here for the rest of the night. We're going to let you go. But first of all, we want to thank you guys. This was fun. Uh, our first live uh, version of this. And I think this is going to be the first of many because I really enjoyed seeing the comments and, and having the conversation with you guys. Mm -hmm. uh, if you are not already following us on Bronze and Modern Gods, you might want to do that on Instagram and Facebook. And if you are uh, here, wait, hold on a second. There it is. I always have trouble finding <laughs> that button. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel, this is a good time to do so. So mash that subscribe button. Whack it. Whack it. Don't whack it. No, don't whack it. You don't want it's, to do that. It's good to see some regular faces out there. Um, this is a this is a very tight knit community. So I, I appreciate the support from from all the regulars. We do. You know, and I don't I don't want to go because we're seeing some more comments. If you've got a second, Richard, we can stay on and, and answer some comments. Uh, uh, Steven, our buddy, sure. Minor Keys Comics. I don't know why you didn't sign in with that, Steve. You should get to the YouTube channel. Um, he's talking about- Oh, that about was a six. Yeah, that was a six cover. Okay, I thought it was five, but yeah. Isn't that crazy? Uh, that, that I mean, it, it, it somehow got through the manufacturing process with six freaking covers on it. Uh, that's That's amazing. Yeah, uh, of the uh, more than appropriately named Sith Lordy wishes he still <laughs> had his Darth Vader figure action figure. Oh, figure. I know, I know. Oh man, yeah. I don't know if anybody saw um, any Star Wars fan. Uh, comic uh, Elite Eleven had the prototype um, Boba, Fett. Boba Fett on there today for one hundred twenty thousand dollars. <laughs> so you know, buy a house, buy a Boba. Fett. <laughs> right, right. And one more from Jay Marsh. If Diamond is threatening that you need to send it back, the recall for the Venom 27, CGC decided not to grade them. Ooh, this happened in 2019 uh, on something he didn't get. Now, it's interesting, though, because you say that, Jay Marsh, but I also remember the Elseworlds 80-page special that was recalled because of the Super Baby story by Kyle Baker, where yeah. you know, the baby the goes baby to microwave. microwave. Yeah, it, was, it was great. Funny. Uh, CGC did grade those. They also graded the uh, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen um, issue with the infamous Marvel douche ad on the back. So those have been graded as well. So I'm not sure if that was after the fact or if you know, here we go. Someone got something right here. You got an example for us? Well, yeah. I mean, I've got this thing, which was uh, uh, the AOC supposed to 250 covers. Uh, apparently, it was contested because of um, she's dressed in Wonder Woman's costume. What, what, what is it? There's a really bad glare on it. What, what yeah. comic? Oh, this is the Ocas uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, the Freshman Force book. Mm, um, okay. This was, uh, I don't want to make too much noise trying to get out of here. Yeah. Um, this was kind of big uh, two years ago. Mm -hmm. And I picked it up because it was one of 250 and it got recalled. We don't really know how many are out there. But it got great. Obviously, it got graded. It went through the signature series. So. Um, CGC is not above making money, uh, regardless of what uh, <laughs> the manufacturer wants to do with the book. I, I guess that, you know, they consider it if it's in your hands, your book. And how is, how let's, let's talk realistically here. How is Marvel or diamond going to enforce this recall? Because your shop, um, I, I guess what it comes down to is when was the recall issued? If it was issued yesterday, before 9 a.m. Pacific time or Eastern time, they may have a case. Hey, we told you before you opened, don't sell this book, recall it. But if it you know, happened yesterday afternoon or later, they have no leg to stand on because you're no. a store. You have to make inventory move. That's You can't mm -hmm. sit 
it on inventory. If you see something hot, you knew a customer wants it. You got to sell it. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's a good chance that he had 10 copies of it and then your open, door is open at nine. The first guy is a speculator. He buys all 10 copies. You know, you, it's, you can't send back what you don't have. Uh, Azores Tiger says, when he got to his shop yesterday, there was only one copy of the regular Venom. Wow. And that was the Stegman cover. Uh, I can tell you, I went, because I'm a big nerd, I took an early lunch. I do work. And I went at about 11.30 to three different shops here in Long Beach, Southern California. We're spoiled. We've got a lot of shops out here. I was able to grab a few from one shop. Every other sh The other two shops had a limit to one customer. Uh, and then I have my pool list where I had all of my variants uh, reserved for me. So, yeah, this one's tough already. And But here, here's dad warning you again. We're going on month three of this book being on fire. Issue 25, issue 26, issue 27. Issue 28 is when we're going to see the correction, when retailers are going to wise up and over order because these last three have been on fire. So Same with uh, Thor, you know. Yeah. Door exactly. number five was was really hard to come by on you know the release day. Uh, Thor number six, which is coming out, uh, was it this week? It came out, or is it is it uh, next week? Uh, next so, week, I'm next mm -hmm. week. Um, it's also going to be hot. Um, Thor seven, you know, it could be a book that's a correction. So I would, I'll still get a copy just because Donny Cates is writing some fire right now, um, but I may not spec on it. You know, it, it all depends. Yeah. And, you know, it's not the fact that the book isn't bad or it's not uh, it's not collectible or they're not going to be first appearances. It's just the fact that there's going to be more out there, because yeah. if you're a retailer and you were ordering 10 Venoms, you know, for your customers but, uh, and five for the uh, shelf. So, uh, I've been seeing uh -oh. a trend, too, though, with 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 Marvel. Am I, am I cutting out? No, you're good. Go ahead. OK, uh, Marvel has been has been really hot about releasing second prints and third prints uh, and et cetera of a book as, you know, as to milk the popularity of that book. And with the way the market is going with these these secondary prints, um, it's kind of hard to judge where to put the where to put your money. Uh, I would always stick with first prints unless one of the subsequent prints has something noteworthy like um the third print for Edge of Spider Verse number two, which had that really cool design cover, or like the um, the null cover for or four, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. With that there's some winter cover. Everybody's nuts for that cover, man. Yeah, yeah. So you know, just because it's a later print does and it may have a smaller print run doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be an important book compared to the first print. All right. We're going to let you guys go. Uh, this was great. We're going to do this again very soon. Uh, give us a topic if you want to have a live chat with us and we can riff on it for about a half hour or so. Yeah. Uh, and we will keep you posted on the Venom 27 1 in 100 Stegman John Boy Meyer <laughs> double cover variant Let's see, yeah, see. Edge Sunday with nuts and a cherry <laughs> on controversy. Yeah. Throw Peach Momoko in there someplace because you have to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. Before we go, Peach Momoko, the Spider Man number one Peach Momoko variant cover. Yay so, or nay? I am so done with that, with that, with homages to that cover. You know, it's, I am done. Just like homages to Spider Man 300, I am so tired of seeing people fly through a circle and numbers around it and all that crap. You have the ability to come up with something more creative, in my opinion. What say you, uh, YouTube commenters? Uh, I saw that cover and I was like, oh, that was like me drawing it when it came out in 91 on the back of my notebook. <laughs> I was not impressed. No, uh, she she has different. Some of her stuff I really like, like her Usagi Ojimbo, uh number six. Her That cover is awesome because it's a Japanese subject. Yeah. You know, um, She tends to do well with those kinds of characters. Um, she, she is so hot right now. People are contracting her to do books. And I don't think the books are really, her covers really stress the subject that they are, that she's being contracted to do, mm -hmm. um, as, as they do for summer. So, so to me, it's hit or miss. I buy the ones that I like and I will either buy and flip the other ones or just pass them by. Like I passed the Spider-Man one by. So, uh, Peach Momoko, she is striking while the iron is hot and grabbing those bills. 
Good but, for her. Good for her. She's a great artist. I'm I'm not dissing her. I'm just saying some of it just doesn't appeal to me. Great artist. Okay. All right. So <laughs> we're gonna go <laughs> this time for sure. Thank you everybody for joining us, and we will see you on Monday. Have a great one. All day. right. Have a good one.